Okay, let's discuss a little bit more though why we can't get a reaction here. First of all, why can't we do a SN1 here? What, what is it about this substrate that makes it impossible to do an SN1? Of course, the table says we're not going to do it, but um, why is it that the table says that? Why can't this type of substrate? This substrate can never do an SN1, and why is that? Perhaps we should talk through that. So, um, well, because they're the, why can it not do an SN1? Yeah. No matter what the nucleophile is, this could never do an SN1. This substrate just is the whole electrophilic molecule. So, uh, well, the, uh, the, if it can't do an SN1, the leaving group doesn't want to leave for whatever reason. Okay, so let's stop and think about that. In a way, that's right. Uh, but then when that just pushes it back one, why would the leaving group leave since this is normally a good leaving group? Well, remind me, what is the big obstacle to an SN2 reaction? Steric. Steric hindrance. It's best to say that as steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile. It's good to focus on the fact that the problem with SN2 is steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile. Something we haven't talked about yet today, do you remember what's the big obstacle to an SN1 reaction? Which charge in particular? So, well, the, the stability of the uh, carbon cation. Okay, that's the key. The big obstacle to an SN1 is stabilizing the carbocation. Because that's the part that nature doesn't like, right? Nature doesn't like forming charges. Nature doesn't like forming that carbocation. So nature will not let us do an SN1 unless we can mollify her by stabilizing that carbocation. Unless there's some way to stabilize the carbocation, nature won't let us make it in the first place because nature doesn't normally like making charges. That wasn't an issue for SN2, because in SN2 there never is a carbocation, right? Correct. But for the SN1, we're going to have to form a carbocation. So the big issue is stabilizing that carbocation. All right, now we have to ask, how can we stabilize the carbocation? Well, would we do that by surrounding it by electron donors or electron withdrawers? Electron donors. Yeah, because if, you, if you're positive, you can be stabilized if there's people around you to donate electrons to you. And the next step in the logic is, what are carbon chains? Are carbon chains electron donors or electron withdrawers? And that's something that's hard to figure out, but it turns out carbon chains are electron donors. That's a very important point for the whole rest of the course, so it's important to have that clearly in our notes. Carbon chains are electron donors. Carbon chains are electron donors. For example, let's compare, say, this carbocation and this carbocation. This carbocation doesn't have any carbon chains attached to it, and this has one carbon chain attached to it. Well, the carbon chains are electron donors. They donate electrons. So which of these would be more stable, left or right? right. Yeah, this will be more stable because it's got this electron donating carbon chain. And the more carbon chains we add on, the more stable it's going to be. The more carbon chains we add on, the more stable it's going to be. It doesn't really matter how long the carbon chains are. So this and this, there's no real difference between how long this chain is. This won't do us any good. But the way to make this more stable is to replace some of these other hydrogens with carbon chains. If I replace this with another carbon chain, it doesn't matter how long this is, but if I put another carbon chain, that'll make this even more stable than before. Okay. Um, so, first of all, um, we, we always want to know why things work in organic chemistry. You wouldn't really think that a carbon chain would be electron donating since it doesn't really have a negative charge on it. You kind of just have to memorize it. But when we say that things are electron donors, what we mean is, we mean this is electron donating compared to hydrogen. We mean this can, it can donate more electrons than hydrogen. Well, in a very rude and, cruff, uh, in a rude and rough kind of way, crude and rough way, we could say that um, who has more electrons to donate, a carbon chain or a hydrogen? Carbon. Because it's got a whole cloud of electrons, whereas the hydrogen has basically no electrons, except for the two that are in the bond, whereas this, car this carbon chain has electrons all over the place. So it's not too surprising that carbon chains can donate more electrons than hydrogens, just because they have way more electrons than hydrogens. There's a more sophisticated explanation for that, but you might not need that for your course. So we'll just say a carbon chain has way more electrons around it than a hydrogen, so it can donate way more electrons. The key point is just to memorize carbon chains are electron donors. That's going to come up repeatedly um, through all the different terms of the OCHEM class. Okay. And you kind of have to memorize that because it's not obvious because they don't have negative charges. You just have to have that memorized. By the way, what's another name for a carbon chain? 
Another name for a carbon chain is an alkyl group. Uh, what were you going to say? Alkyl group. Oh, good. Okay. An alkyl group. In fact, your instructor probably wouldn't say carbon chains or electron donors. They just say alkyl groups. So we have to be uh, comfortable with this term. An alkyl group is electron donating because an alkyl group is a carbon chain. Um, and another way to describe the difference between these is we would say this right-hand carbon is more substituted. If you've got more alkyl groups, an no chem professor would say that you're more substituted. Substituted with what? With alkyl groups. So something else we can see here, this would also be expressed as substitution stabilizes carbocations. Substitution stabilizes carbocations. It would be uh, more accurate to say substitution with alkyl groups stabilizes carbocations, but people usually just shorten that and say substitution stabilizes alkyl. Uh, substitution stabilizes carbocations, and it's understood that we mean alkyl groups are the things that we're substituting with. So this is again a crucial idea for the course. Okay, so, so the more so substituted is more stable. And this is why the uh, the ion is not leaving because it's basically it's trying to hold on to um, the electron. I mean, the bond's fairly strong compared to, because it has nothing else to draw the electrical or the negative right. charge from. That's right. Okay. That's right. We'll be able to explain that a little bit better in one second. That's the basic idea. So the key thing is, well, then we have to ask, how many alkyl groups do you need to form a, so nature will not allow you to form a carbocation unless it can be stabilized in some way. So nature would never allow us to make this carbocation. It's not stabilized enough. Well, what do we have to do to let nature uh, let us do this? It's got to be at least secondary. The only carbocations you can form are secondary and tertiary. You can only form secondary and tertiary carbocations. You can never form methyl or primary carbocations. This is another crucial idea. You can only form secondary and tertiary carbocations. You can never form methyl or primary carbocations. Okay. That shouldn't surprise us because secondary and tertiary are more substituted, so we'd expect them to be more stable. Whereas methyl and primary have hardly any alkyl groups, so we expect them to be unstable. Um, in, uh, in, uh, in later in the course, you'll see some exceptions to this, but in the first couple, first, I guess the first quarters that you're in, um, you wouldn't see any exceptions. We're not going to form primary or methyls. So in real life, this would never be formed. Nature would not let you form this because this is a methyl, and you couldn't even form a primary. So now we can see, why can't we do an SN1? Well, if we did do an SN1, this would be the intermediate. If we were going to do an SN1, this would be the intermediate. But nature says, no way, I'm not going to let you form that primary carbocation. That's not going to be stabilized enough, and therefore it has never happened in the first place. The iodine can't leave, because that would leave behind a primary carbocation, which nature does not allow. All right. Now, would it be appropriate on the test to like show what the uh, potential product would be and put an X through it and just say that uh, uh, first degree carbocations don't happen? Um, if they specifically or would you ask say you, no reaction. Yeah, it depends. Uh, it can't hurt to say no reaction, and here's why. Okay. Uh, I would certainly give you more credit for that. Yeah, usually it's better not to just give an answer, but an explanation. So I would say no reaction. We can't do an SN1 because that would generate a primary carbocation. Yeah, so yeah, that would be the best type of answer there. All right, so I'm going to erase this because this actually isn't going to happen. Okay, and that's why if you look at the table, um, if you look at the primary rows, there's no SN1s in any of the primary rows. There's no SN1s in the primary rows because we can't form primary carbocations. And of course, there's no SN1 in the methyl row either. SN1 only ever occurs in the secondary and tertiary rows. That's something we should be able to see without even looking at the table. Okay. All right, the most important thing, well, we learned a lot of very important things here. Most important, what's the big obstacle to SN1? Stabilizing the carbocation. That's a really important slogan to memorize. The big obstacle to SN1 is stabilizing the carbocation. The big obstacle to SN2 is steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile. And if we memorize those two slogans, those explain almost all the other facts about SN1 and SN2. If we memorize those two slogans, we can use those to explain almost everything else about SN1 and SN2. Okay. Um, and then we saw how do you stabilize a carbocation? Well, the most important way to stabilize a carbocation is by substituting it with alkyl groups, because alkyl groups are electron donors.